Today we're going to be talking about how to use a Maclaurin series to evaluate a limit. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to evaluate the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x minus x plus 1 sixth x to the third, all divided by x to the fifth. Now, as a reminder, I've written the Maclaurin series representation of sine of x, which is this infinite sum here from n equals 0 to infinity of this series here, a sub n. I've also expanded this series to show the first several terms of the series. And the reason that we need to do that is because we're going to use the first several terms. We're going to substitute the first several terms into our limit in place of sine of x. Now, if you ever don't have the Maclaurin series representation of sine of x or some other series that you need, you can always just figure out the Maclaurin series by making your table. Remember, we'll you know start with sine of x and then we'll take subsequent derivatives. We'll plug in the value for 0 because the Maclaurin series is always about 0. And we'll you know derive the first several terms of this series. And from the first several terms here, you can find a representation for the a sub nth term, which is what we've been given here in this infinite sum, the summation notation. So what we want to try to do in this case is plug in the first several terms of the series for sine of x. And the reason that's going to be helpful is because you'll notice that the rest of the terms in this limit are all just power functions. It's essentially a polynomial. We've got here x to the first, we've got 1 6 x cubed and x to the fifth. They're all just simple power functions. Sine of x is not, but if we plug in the first several terms of the series of sine of x here, now we've just got a rational function. We've got a bunch of power functions inside this rational function. So that's what we're going to do. When we do that, we're going to say we have the limit as x goes to 0, here's where we're going to plug in these first several terms for sine of x. So what we're going to get is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial plus, and we'll just abbreviate and say dot dot dot, and now we're going to have here minus x plus 1 sixth x to the third. And this whole thing is going to be divided by x to the fifth. So instead of using an extra line and dividing by x to the fifth, what I'll do is put brackets around this and say that we're going to multiply by 1 over x to the fifth, which of course is just the same thing. Now you can really start to see why this is helpful. What we find immediately is that we have this positive x term here, this positive x value from our series sine of x, then we have this negative x value. So these two are going to cancel, x minus x, that's going to cancel. We also have this negative x cubed over 3 factorial. Well, 3 factorial is 6. So essentially, we have negative x cubed over 6. We have positive x cubed over 6 here. So these two values are going to cancel as well. Now what we're left with is the limit as x goes to 0. We're just obviously simplifying here. What we're left with is just this x to the fifth divided by 5 factorial term minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial. Since we've gotten rid of the first two terms, we can go ahead and add a few other terms just to make sure we've got a good visual representation of what we're dealing with here. So x to the 11 over 11 factorial plus dot dot dot. And we're going to be multiplying all of that by 1 over x to the fifth, or in other words, just dividing by x to the fifth. So when we distribute this x to the fifth across each one of these terms inside the parentheses, we're going to be dividing each term by x to the fifth. And what that's going to leave us with is the limit as x goes to 0. This x to the fifth over 5 factorial divided by x to the fifth, we're going to get that entire x to the fifth to cancel. We're just going to be left with 1 over 5 factorial. For this x to the 7 over 7 factorial, we're going to be left with just this negative x squared here in the numerator, 7 factorial in the denominator. So we're really just reducing the power here in the numerator by 5. This is going to become x to the 4 over 9 factorial minus x to the 6 over 11 factorial plus, and we'll just leave it at that. Now we've really got our limit simplified to something we can actually work with, something that we can actually 
evaluate. If we evaluate this limit as x goes to zero, what we see immediately is that we have several terms in our series here that are going to cancel. If x goes to zero, then any term with an x in the numerator here is going to become zero. So we'll obviously end up here with zero squared divided by seven factorial, which of course will always be zero. So this is going to become zero, this will become zero, this will become zero, and every term after this term will become zero as well. All we're going to be left with, therefore, is the first term in the series. We have the limit as x goes to zero of one over five factorial. Well, we can't really plug in zero for x there because we've got no x value there. Therefore, the value is just one over five factorial, which is equal to one over 120. And that's it. That's the value of the limit. That's how we can use a Maclaurin series to evaluate a limit like this one.